everyone, I'm Maryam from Tinkubate and today we'll be talking through a project we did recently where we took an existing wired Modbus solution and created a retrofit a prototype that can turn it wireless. For this project, we worked with Air Liquide, who wanted to explore wireless connectivity for the remote site gas monitoring solutions. Their business objectives were to reduce site installation cost and complexity. By moving to more modern wireless architecture, they can improve their operational efficiencies by introducing some edge or near edge computing capabilities and open up doors for easy integrations with partners in the future. I like to always get started by talking about the business end of things and how projects were sort of introduced to us or kicked off. Mainly because I find it really interesting when I hear about how other people do it. But if you want to skip this part and jump right to the technical stuff, go for it. So our team is always building products for ourselves or for others or just for fun. So we keep in touch with a lot of manufacturers and suppliers. And in this project, one of our component suppliers was actually chatting with their client, who is Air Liquide, about their visions um, for the future. And we knew we could build them something pretty quickly that would work for them as a prototype. So it's really typical for bigger businesses to outsource this early stage ideation and development of ideas before they bring it internal to their organization. Big companies are always working on many early stage ideas at the same time before they really finalize them into their final strategic plans and staff up for it. From a technical perspective, starting this project was fairly routine. We always aim to keep it simple and flexible and avoid custom work until we've got a proof of concept up and running. So one of their primary concerns was an easy integration with the installation of their existing system. They needed something that could retrofit. So once we got our hands on a couple of their current wired solutions, we did some technical research, drew up some plans and sort of dug into our drawers and started building right away. So the first steps were really flushing out the system architecture and design to know what we wanted to start with. When we're talking about remote monitoring over large areas with many sensors distributed in that area, we always go straight to LoRa as the first choice. LoRa offers long range, low power options that are becoming more and more affordable for end nodes. Mesh technologies aren't really ideal here because mesh requires the nodes to be constantly on, which isn't great for power consumption. Cellular options can quickly become expensive and operationally cumbersome, and they have a SIM in each sensor reporting very small amounts of data, which isn't a great use of that resource. To make integrations easy in the future, Using the LoRaWAN network here really makes sense. The LoRaWAN network uses a standardized communications protocol so that any deployed available network in the area can direct sensor messages to the right spot in the cloud. The architecture we came up with is IoT based, where many gas monitoring sensors will be in one location connected to a centralized gateway that pushes information into the cloud and can be accessed through the internet. For implementation, we always iterate on the design as we go. So the first thing we grabbed was a Northern Mechatronics EVB that has the NM180100 module on it. And we always keep these on site. So we wanted to build up the connection and work in an open space. So we wired it up with an RS232 transceiver on the breadboard. And this proved out the serial connection and the communications and let us implement the firmware to run on the Ambic Apollo 3, which has an ARM Cortex M4F processor. The code was written to send and receive Modbus commands over serial, essentially turning the NM180100 into the Modbus master. Next, we got started on the wireless connectivity part. So we connected the EVB wirelessly through LoRa using the Things Network we verified that we could send and receive commands all the way from TTN directly to the meter and receive responses end to end. Once that system was up and running, we focused on configuring a gateway to check the localized implementation. We chose a multi-tech MTCDT247L because Air Liquide wanted to test on their own localized network first and be flexible to move to LoRaWAN. This gateway also runs Node-RED, which is a useful tool to quickly and easily write and deploy server-side programs. So once the system was working in the big form, we moved on to making the design more compact and easy to install. 
We were still focusing on using off the shelf components here as we're only making a small batch for testing. We chose the SparkFun Laura Thing Plus Explorable Board since it also uses the same module on the EBB that we were using, which is the NM180100 Laura BLE module. And since we wrote most of our embedded software in embed, it was an easy choice. As a side note, you can learn more about the development of this board on our website. We have a blog post about it, uh, tinkybait.com. I'll link it in the comments. The other two small boards we chose were the RS232 transceiver and a DC to DC power supply to allow for a single power source to run the unit. The gas meter took a power supply between 9 volts and 30 volts, so we made our power supply selection based on suitability to that spec. For the outer housing, we wanted a small container that would be suitable for the installation environment. So we found a small cost-effective option that's around two inches by three inches by an inch and a half. We designed a simple tray to sit snugly in the box and hold the three boards in place, keeping the wires cleanly organized underneath it. We put a small nine volt battery inside the box and connected it to the power supply. The design was done so that either a battery could power the unit and the gas meter, or the meter could power the unit. We added an external antenna that connected to the UFL on the SparkFun board. The exterior of the box just has an SMA connector on it, so any 900 megahertz regular SMA antenna can easily be swapped out. The final deliverable was a few units of the proof of concept design to use for demos and testing. The deployment area will be a tower with a gateway at a high point in an urban setting, and the end node units will be in standard outdoor urban and rural locations nearby. For easy installation, it gets retrofit right onto a meter by simply removing the cap, plugging in the connectors, plugging the cap back on, and then configuring their dashboard to identify that end node with the correct meter. Ease of provisioning is something that's really important to us and is often overlooked. So we made sure that that was simple and configurable at the point of installation, which is why we always like to include a short range radio in our designs whenever possible. Looking at the specs, the parts that we have here are the electronics in the tray, a housing, an antenna, and a battery. The end size is two inches by three inches by 1.5 inches. Power inputs, nine volt to 30 volt, it's got LoRa and Bluetooth low energy wireless communications. And the LoRa range here, we'd say five to seven kilometers conservatively and 10 to 15 kilometers in open air with line of sight. We built this proof of concept so that it's ready for future capability. The processor utilization on it is very low. So it's open to work and experimentation on edge processing and machine learning applications in the future. The gateway provides a unified dashboard view of several remote sensors and provides it as a single virtual Modbus device for the Airlikey team to use for operations or analytics, maintenance planning, and any other systems that can benefit from the remote monitoring. So what's next? For this project, we've done remote demos and we've shipped the units to Airlikey for them to install on site and do live demo showcasing the monitoring solution. Normally we'd be on site with them, but due to COVID restrictions right now, we're not able to do that. Next steps, if we were taking this further, would be a full custom design that's smaller, more cost effective per unit and scalable to manufacture. The target would be to make it fit right inside the meter itself with the antenna being run externally. The new design would be able to power the device from five volts up to 30 volts, which is a wider range than we're currently supporting. The majority of the work will be on the communication side to beef up the features that are there and enable some edge computing decisions. Some final thoughts kind of on the business side. We spent a lot of time talking to clients and partners about tech decisions and how they make them in their business. And something that's become much more prevalent lately is the fact that companies are growing tired of buying solutions that come with recurring service costs to be able to access their own data especially those with a lack of customization, we're seeing more and more companies wanting to move towards a model where they have full access and full control of their data. So the freedom of having unlimited access to your own data without needing to pay subscription rates was really a key driver of this project for Air Liquide. It kind of seems like the B2B SaaS model that investors really love. 
is becoming tiring to the end customers. So when the corporate budget allows, there's significant value in building a custom solution and very few barriers when you do find the right partner. Tinkybate supports a variety of different initiatives, all being incubated together. We incubate our own ideas into solutions that people can buy, and we also help incubate other people's ideas into solutions they can own. If you have a project idea that you want to explore, reach out today. I'll drop all our contact info into the comments below.